Time to get back on the night bus and finish up this event. I'm Professor Vokas, and this is Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Hello, Professor. I didn't see you there. When last we were together, I needed about 15 brilliant uh, foundables from this event and about five mysterious artifacts. I think it was exactly five, and I think it was about 15. And I still needed to use one tonic for trace detection, which, and I had said, I'll probably throw it on there. And I actually did end up throwing it on, but it was actually, I went, made a trip to the grocery store. Grocery store parking lots are, are fantastic for spawns, I gotta say. Because I got them all in a very short trip, just walking around really within the grocery store, which does make you kind of float a little bit, which you get some uh, port key distance. But tons of spawns wouldn't even have needed the tonic. They were just everywhere. So knocked out the brilliance almost immediately and the mysterious as well. So let's go ahead and collect these three. So using the tonic for trace detection, a unicorn hair. I have a ton of those. Those are used in uh, potent extimulus, by the way. Um, 45 brilliant foundables from this event, the potent extimulo. Woohoo! That was, that's the only one I have right now. I had run out actually. And then the silver key for the 30 mysterious artifacts traces. So the only thing we have left is one wizarding challenge in my highest chamber, which will be dark five, and using five potions, which my plan, whether I need to or not, I'm just going to use potions in that dark five. So I'll use healing potions so I don't have to be revived by a magic zoologist if we have one, and, and or use extimulos. I have about 40 something right now, regular extimulos. So I use those just to make things go a little bit quicker. So let's go check out the night bus and see if anybody is in dark five. I feel like, yeah, there we go. I feel like this is the time. Oh, and we're gonna go ahead and use a um, oddities level four because I am looking for that centaur bow. Ugh. All right, so I'm exiting. If you just saw, there was three wizards, including me. So when I came in, there was already two there. For me, at least, that's probably too many. You want to leave slots for other, for magic zoologists and maybe another aura to come in. Instead of, if we jam it with three professors and there's already an aura, then the only slot, they're hopefully waiting for that magic zoologist and it's already at four. But if I back out, it gives them kind of two chances at that, if that makes sense. So that's usually what I'll do. So I'm going to go, I see it says two now. Let's see who is in there. Okay, it looks like it's a new chamber because it is at 143 now. So the other one was a little bit lower down, I think. Wow, two, two people came in. So we've actually got the perfect group. Well, I say perfect group. We just have a good mixture. Two professors, two Aurors, and a uh, magic zoologist. One of the Aurors actually left. That's so weird. All right, well, let's see if any focus gets passed. The other professor, I think, did get some focus passed or at least gained it. So I can go ahead and start shielding some people now. Shield... Everybody but me to start with. Well, not the other professor. They can shield themselves for sure. And then go after... Ugh. Guess I will take a dangerous dark wizard because there's not anything else available. I guess somebody must have gone after that. All right. Well, I can go after um, a lower Urkling, an imposing Urkling, and leave the, the harder Urklings for the magic zoologist. At least get something done. And as we said, I'm going to use... An Extimulo potion, because I need to use five during this battle. So I'll probably just use these constantly until I don't need to. So proficiency was cast, so that's nice. That's a good start to things. As soon as I shield myself, we'll be good. And then hopefully the Magic Zual just cast Bravery so we can actually uh, start to knock out some of those elites as they come up. I may use a healing potion in a little bit, again, just to use the potion. Oh, I didn't put an extimulo on. All right, I did pop a healing potion, by the way. I think I skipped by that in the recording, but did do that. And so now I can shield myself. So we are all shielded up. Now I can start knocking out some of these pixies and werewolves with the other professor, which will be good. All right, pixie down, backing out. Now I should have, so now I have enough focus to actually put down some deterioration hex, which the first thing I'm gonna go after is the um, magic zoologist is against an acromantula and it's elite. Uh, so I generally will put it on acromantulas um, or elites themselves because the battle's gonna last longer. There's gonna be more back and forth. And the more times you're taking damage from it, then it's taking damage. So it's activating more times essentially. Anyway, I'm going to go in against this werewolf. So bravery has been cast. So I am actually, I'm going to throw this on actually a regular Acromantula. And I'm actually going after an elite dangerous werewolf. So sec 
second to highest level elite. I do have an extimulo on. I may even put a strong extimulo on after this, just because I have a bunch of those as well. Nice, there we go, took that out. Sweet, they had already taken it out. Man, I've been getting Neville's wand a lot. Oh, I got the horned serpent egg. I wanted the centaur bow. And those are the only two choices for not of these. There's only two possible things, but that's okay. I got a 2188 uh, challenge experience, which is nice. 10 out of these, of course, and then the regular experience. All right, so let's back out. I've, I, def I used about six potions, I think, because I used like a four extimulos. I used a strong extimulo. I used a couple healing potions, mainly so the magic you all just never had to heal me or revive me. So anyway, let's head over to special assignments. Sweet. So use five potions and wizarding challenges, one spell book. I will take that. Again, I'm just stockpiling spell books. Um, instead of using them on other um, professions, I figure I'm just going to save them just in case they do open up new lessons for all the different professions. For professor specifically, I want to make sure that if you need spell books that I have them, just like scrolls as well. And then complete one wizarding uh, challenge in my highest chamber. I got that, of course, just a second ago in Dark Five. So there you go. It is completed. So 2,000 experience, 100 family experience for this brilliant page, five Defense Against Dark Arts books, which I still, I've been stockpiling. I'm not sure what I want to spend them on. Um, one new Ministry ID card uh, title, and then five of the Ron fragments. This will let me place that image, and we're going to talk about something about that actually. And then 30 spell energy. So I'll go ahead and collect that. Nice. And actually the 30 spell energy, that's nice because it probably took me about that much. Event complete. Congratulations. We did it. If we head over to my dailies too, I think I've done everything. So we're just going to collect them all. I had a wizarding challenge. It was the only thing I had left before we just did that and I knew we were going to do it. And then, um, so down here at the bottom, the walk 0.25 kilometers. I do know I already have space in all my charms to, to collect and not even be over. So I sh should be good on that. And then complete all tasks in the daily assignments for those eight coins. Slo slowly building my coins back up. Remember I was at 800 for a little bit, but I bought 10 silver keys for 720. Let's head over to the registry. Challenges, I believe I probably have a rank up. I don't, Neville's one that didn't max out or anything like that. So 124 couple more spell books. And then over at the events, since I got some more family experience, that's going to do it. And we're going to rank up there. Oh, a couple times. Oh, because we got the final reward that gave us a bunch of family experience. All right. So then Ron's image is the last image I need to place. I am going to go ahead and place it, which gets me 10 uh, family experience. Ron nearly died that night. You know, when I think about it now, as a mother with my own children, what were we doing in those rooms was utterly insanity. And yet, if we hadn't, Voldemort would have continued consolidating his power underground, hiding in the shadows. Although that was pretty insane for them to go to the Ministry of Magic like that and just like, oh, we're just going to go fight the Dark Lord and all of his minions that have been dueling and are better at magic than us and all that. And boom, we're just going to go fight him. I mean, if the Order of Phoenix hadn't shown up, it pretty much would have been over for them. So they definitely got lucky on that one. Oh, after collecting those rewards, I just backed out. There is one last little message. There is no debate. This surge is very specifically focusing on that night in the department during fifth year. Oh, look. This is Gareth Greengrass. This is the one she said his name rhymes with whatever she said. This is the guy. It is Gareth Greengrass. That's one interpretation. I wouldn't say it's not debatable. I would say that I am greatly concerned that top secret objects, objects that are not widely known about and rarely discussed, are now being routinely stolen by the Calamity. Well, you would agree that there must be some reason, wouldn't you, Minister? By the way, he's a senior unspeakable Department of Mysteries. So he works in the Department of Mysteries. Yes, there is some reason. And hopefully, when this surge inevitably returns, we can figure out how to stop the non this nonsense before more ministry secrets are splayed all across the bloody globe for all to see. All right, well, Gareth Greengrass made an appearance. Anyway, speaking of the next part of the Brilliant Event, part two, which really starts next week, I will have the guide out in tomorrow's video. So, but even though I'm putting the guide out tomorrow, I wanted to get you at least a head start on kind of two parts of it, of things you're going to need to do that you could sort of start preparing now if you don't have things ready. So the first thing is, let me go over to potions. 
And let's go to recipes. So during the event, um, you're gonna have to do two different things with Invigoration Draft. One of the things you have to do is brew one. So make sure you have one ready. Again, you don't have to actually brew it while the event's happening. You can actually have it brewed, but just don't collect it yet. It's in the first task too, just like this event had the tonic for trace detection. So looking at a invigor invigoration draft, just make sure you have the ingredients. If you can see for me right here, I am missing both the uh, honey water and is that the verb, uh, what is it? Vervain infusion. I, I always wanna say Viridian like Pokemon, Viridian City. But anyway, Vervain Infusion, I'm missing both of those, so I'm looking for them on the ground. And then also, there we go, uh, Scurvy Grass you need, and then Lovage you need. Both of which I usually throw away. The only reason I have those is because I saw the tasks coming out, and I'm like, I'm gonna need these. So I'm just, look, Honey Water I see all the time, I just need to remember to pick it up and not throw it away. And then the Vervain Infusion I also see and get, and I just forget it all the time. So anyway, just make sure you get some of those. And even more so is you actually need three, really. Well, I take it back, you need two. You need to brew one, and in the second set of tasks, and I'll go over all this in the guide, but just know this right now, you can start working on it, is you're going to need to use two Invigoration Drafts. It requires it. So you'll just need to actually have two on hand. So if you already have a couple on hand, you're good to go, you just need to brew one. If you don't have any, go ahead and brew two, essentially. Have two ready, pick them both up at the first task, and then you'll have them for the second task. The second and probably bigger thing you can sort of start to prepare for, and I'll talk about how you could possibly prepare for this, <clears throat> is you're going to, on this page here, you can see I'm ranked 29. That's my family experience bar. I'll be more, of course, as this event goes on but you're going to have to get 500 family experience from this from Brilliant Foundables, which is gonna be rough because just returning them doesn't get you much at all. And even placing the images, I'll even show you some of the images. So one of the, the things that's gonna be on the main map is Brilliant Harry Potter. And when you place his image, so after you get 20 of him, you get five family experience towards that 500. <laughs> so you'd have to do that 100 times which 100 times, 20 fragments, no thank you. And then the other one is um, this unknown foundable. It'll also be out there. I can't remember what it is. It'll be in tomorrow's guide. It really doesn't matter. The, the fact is it only gives you five as well. Even the, you look at the uh, zero out of five one, and the zero out of five is always going to be the port key one. So five fragments and port keys, you get uh, 10 family experience for that. And then looking over here, zero out of one, this is going to be the single fragment they give you from tasks, and that gives you 10 as well, but, um, but you can't really rely on that. And then the zero out of three, right here, which is a Death Eater, it's a type of Death Eater though, um, it only gives you six when you place it, and that's from going into Fortress Challenges. But the two other ways you can really get it, um, one is when you go into a fortress and you're gonna get fragments of this guy, each time you get a fragment, you'll also actually get 10 family experience. So 10 out of 500 doesn't seem like a lot, but it's about the biggest chunk you can get, except for one other thing I'm about to tell you. So doing the fortresses going into next week will be good. So I would even say save your brilliant runestones until then, it, just save any excess and maybe don't use them now. If you don't need to use them now, hold on to them just so you can run fortresses more. Because really what it means is every time you place this image, you will have gotten three fragments. So that'll be 10, 20, 30, plus the six for placing the image. So that's 36 out of 500. Not too bad, because after three times, that's about 100. It's a little over 100, obviously. Um, but that's a much bigger chunk. So you could at least start to wear away on the fortresses. And then lastly, the other thing I'm doing is I'm gonna back out. Going to my port keys, and I thought about opening these, and somebody in my comments actually mentioned this, um, and which made me go, oh yeah, I totally should do that, and they were correct, is I have these brilliant port keys to open. Well, brilliant port keys, in addition to giving the fragments to place that image, that gets me a little bit of family experience. Port keys themselves, the rack spurts, can actually be chunks of family experience. You could get, on average, 20 to 25 experience from each port key. But it's, it is possible. I mean, a port key could give you 150 family experience. It is random, though. That's, that's really the problem. But what I'm going to do, because I don't need Ron, and these fragments will have Ron in it, 
so they're not going to have the, the new fragments, unfortunately. But that's okay. I'm just going to have 10 of them lined up, and when I get to that fourth set of tasks, at that point, I'm going to go ahead and just open up all 10. That at least gives me some large chunks, hopefully, because out of the 10, maybe I'll get lucky and get 150 out of it. And if the other ones I only get 25 out of, that's still another couple hundred. So all in all, port keys are the greatest chance to get a chunk of family experience that is bigger than anything else. So if you wanted to prepare now, even though these port keys will only give you the ROM fragment, they're not gonna give you the fragment for next week, next week's event, it doesn't really matter. You just want the family experience. So just start lining them up, load up on them, and wait until you get to that fourth task, and then do it. It does mean you're not gonna get that image until later, but there's no image requirement now. It's just family experience. So it doesn't matter about getting the port keys of that new image. You can get that at the end of the bonus tasks, or you could just get port keys after this. You can really get port keys as soon as you hit stage four. You're gonna open them all up. You could pick up new ones and walk them out if you want. That is gonna do it for today's episode. I hope you guys found that uh, information useful and are able to take advantage of that going into next week and those events. And be look out, I'll be putting that guide out tomorrow. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Knox.